Welcome to Inside 380. Now, Inside 380, everything is new. Now, the show will continue to evolve. This is just the first, first episode of the new year. So expect things to continuously change and be intrigued by what LA has in store for you in the new year. Now, the topics we will be covering today is the national championship game briefly. Then we will talk about the NBA trade frenzy. After that, we will be talking about UK basketball. Then we will be concluding the show with the AFC and NFC championship. Also highlighting our two favorite sections of Inside 3 and two of mine, of course. The Star Wars will be continuing to come about as we talk about the 380 play of the week, and then we will show the 385 to conclude the show. Now, let's talk about the National Championship. National Championship, Cardio Jones, third-string quarterback, 16-23, to 242 yards, one TD, 21 rushes, 38 yards, another TD on the ground, two fumbles, one pick, but... But despite all the turnovers, four turnovers actually, they still won by 22 points. Now, the reason why they won by 22 points is because they physically and mentally dominated the Oregon Ducks. And the most potent and important facets of the game. The line of scrimmage, the O-line and D-line dominated both sides of the field. As well as the fact, third downs conversions, and in the red zone. Points over turnovers, the Oregon Ducks had 10 points off of turnovers the whole game. Four turnovers, 10 points. Nine as opponent when you got Marcus Mariota behind center. Marcus Mariota also was 24-37, two TDs, a pick, 337 yards. Now, Ezekiel Elliott, 36 rushes, 246 yards, beast mode. All of these games, these big time games where they were 3 0 since Cardale started, set the record for the Big Ten Championship, set the record for the Sugar Bowl, and then set the record in the National Championship game. Constantly breaking records, three straight games over 200 yards. He's a sophomore. They have a young team. They're already a favorite to go again next year. And that's what the college playoff is about. Number four, beat number one, and number two. So who really was number one when you think about it at the end of the day? Think about it. 20 degrees for you with inside 380. Now, people may say this and that and may try to get you to believe that Oregon, you know, they were wrong or Ohio State just got lucky. But when you look at the game, this team, of course they get hot at the right time, but... It's not always about being the best, but it's always about being at your best in the right moment, meaning everyone came together as a collective unit, and they executed. They have a great coach in Urban Meyer, and it's next man up. J.T. Berry got hurt. Braxton Miller was hurt before the season even started. Cardell Jones came up. Ezekiel Elliott stepped this game up. The defense stepped this game up. Everyone stepped their game up in this big moment, and they won the national championship. Therefore, hey, they the world champs for a reason. That's Inside 380 for you. Enough of the inside look on the national championship. Next segment, NBA Trade. <laughs> be talking about the NBA trade deadline. Now, even though it's a few weeks away, we've already seen some pretty puzzling and interesting trades. Now, I'm going to read a trade for you out loud and it'll show up on your screen. Pretty mind-boggling. The Grizzlies trade Tayshaun Prince to Boston and Quincy Pondexter to New Orleans. The Grizzlies get Russ Smith a player trade exception, the Pelicans send Austin Rivers to Boston, and Memphis sends a 2015 second round pick and a protected first round future pick to the Boston Celtics. And a blockbuster three-team trade that helps all three teams do one key thing for each of those franchises. 
one, the Grizzlies become more potent in all offense and give themselves a better chance in the strong Western Conference. The Pelicans give them a better chance and more depth to make a strong push, push into the playoff race inside the West. And also, the Celtics do what they've been doing apparently for the last couple of years. They're rebuilding, they're gaining draft picks, they're stocking up, they're building salary cap space. So, eventually, hopefully something good happens for Danny Ainge. But the real story is Memphis. Now, Grizzlies, now you got a starting lineup. You got Courtney Lee, Michael Conley, you got Jeff Green at your three. And now you got Zebo and Marcus All down low. You also got John Lure. You got Tony Allen, Vince Carter off the bench. It's starting to get more depth and more scoring potency. You already notice how big of an effect Vince Carter's had on his same in short time of being there. It makes him more of a threat in the West because they're going to rebound the ball. They play excellent defense. Hey, you don't want to face the Memphis Grizzlies come play all time. That's a fact. Make me 380 stamp that. Now, also, when you look at it, Jeff Green, it's not the first time you've been a part of a big trade. You remember when a couple years back, you know, my memory is good. I don't know if yours is just as good, all you fans out there watching. Kendra Perkins and Nate Robson were traded for Jeff Green. Now, Kendrick Perkins and Nate Robinson helped mostly Kendrick. The Thunder go to the 2012 NBA Finals that year, even though they lost to the eventual chance the Miami Heat. Big trade. Hopefully Jeff Green can do the same thing for the Grizzlies, but this time be on the happy end of that high, not high risk, but that risk reward mantra. Yeah, Jeff Green can score, but who says he's going to buy into the high all-time and gritty defense that Memphis has in that grindhouse. The world may ne never know. You can either make a Dowie offense like the Grizzlies take another level, or either, you know, they may have to make him an expendable. We'll see how the trade goes. That's NBA Trade Frenzy for you, Inside 3A. Now, Inside 380 is back. Now we're talking about UK basketball. We're talking about the C-A-T-S. Cats, cats, cats. We're talking about those Wildcats. Now, the Wildcats, before they punched the Missouri Tigers in the mouth yesterday when they beat them 86-37, so disrespectful, so disrespectful. Getting back to that bully ball defense that they play. They had two close games, their closest games of the year. Their only OT games of the year. They beat Ole Miss 89-86 in OT, and then they beat Texas A&M 70-64 in double OT. Now, even though it was the worst games they played all year, the most important thing is they won the game. You got to find a way to win. Everybody's not always on their A game. It was probably on their C game, but they found a way to win. Good teams find a way to win. Bad teams find a way to lose. Old age story right there. Now, you see that all the other top 10 teams have been struggling. Duke, Miami, just routes them. 90-72. to 72. In Durham. In their house. They also lost NC State 87-75. Arizona lost to Oregon State 58-56, and then you also had Wisconsin lose 67-62 to to Rutgers without their big man, Frank Kaminsky, also a Wooden Ward, top 25 midseason prospect, and also will probably be there at the end of the year. Trayvon Jackson got hurt. He hurt his leg, and he'll be out for the next six weeks, so guys will have to step up. But Frank... Kaminsky came back from his concussion, so that should definitely help. Now, I know in Duke, you had Coach K looking like this, like, what are you guys doing? Like, when am I going to get my win? He's three-way, 
three wins away from 1,000, he going to be sitting there for a while. They play Louisville on Saturday in Louisville. So the road doesn't get any easier. The ACC is a strong basketball conference, so it should be fun to watch. But at the end of the day, I think the lesson that we all learn, boys and girls, is that UK is still undefeated. The big dog hasn't got kicked out of this doghouse yet. We're still on top of everybody. We're still number one. I don't care if it's unanimous or not. At the end of the day, we're still undefeated. That's Inside 384. You. We're talking about NFL football next. So now we're going to talk about some NFL football. You got the Seahawks, and you got the Packers, and you got the Colts, and you got the Patriots. Now the Patriots beat the Ravens 35-31. They were down 14 twice. They were 0-11 when down 11 plus points at home in the playoffs. No, not in the playoffs, just in general. All time. But add 1-11 to that streak because they beat the Ravens after being down twice by 14. 28-14 and 14-0. And what the Golden Boy do? He did what he always does. He made plays and came through in the clutch and got them the W. The cause got here by beating the Bengals in a wild card, 26-10. The Bengals always off in the playoffs. That's not even a, a joke. Marvin Lewis, I don't even know why I ain't had him his pink slip yet. But the Bengals, they love, you know, rolling around in the mud, which is called mediocrity. Then you had mediocrity. Then you also have the Colts who put a vice grip, they bear hook, the high octane, the high flying offense of the Denver Broncos, Peyton Manning, he says he's been playing with a torn right quad since December 14th, but at the end of the day, you just keep putting asterisks near him. He's the greatest regular season quarterback of all time, but Peyton Manning, he just isn't doing it in the playoffs. 11 and 13 in the playoffs. He's 1-2 and two in the Super Bowl. I don't know what to say to you, Peyton. But with the Seahawks, let's go back on the other side of the fence to the NFC. The Packers, it was a catch. It was a catch. You hear me, all you people out there? It was a catch. That's all I had to say about that. He was reaching for the plane. He lost the ball. End of the discussion. But I'm not a ref, you know. I'm LA 380, so... All I have is my opinion and your stats, as usual. Oh, and an extra 20 degrees. We're not going to get beside the point. The point of the matter is the Seahawks will dominate them. The 12th man will make their mark as they always do. They got Russell. Cam Chancellor played out of his mind. 11 tackles, 1 TD, 1 pick, which was a 90-yard interception return, which put the nail in the coffin for the Panthers this past Saturday. Now, for both of my predictions, I got the Seahawks, who may do something red, and win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. It doesn't happen quite often, but they may be that team. 31-17 Seahawks, 30-27 Colts. That was an unpredictable pick for the Colts, but can't count, count on Andrew Luck. I think he just may find a way. Now, that's Inside 380. We'll end up with the in, we'll end this show up with the 380 play of the week, and we'll also end with the 385, as usual. 380 play of the week candidates, Kimball Walker, Ezekiel Elliott, that golden boy Tom Brady who comes through the clutch, Russell Wilson, the, the supposed vet now, and we got Cam Chancellor by far. The best safety in the game. Legion of Boom, inside 380. Watch that 385. I'm out. Again, time. Near side, intercepted. It's intercepted by Chancellor.
116-101, Phoenix. Here's Archie Goodwin. Look out! of ease and then the emphatic throwdown with bad intentions that's got the crowd up the fans are loving Archie we talk so much about his athletic ability and look where he takes off from and says I'm climbing the back and just his elevation coming right at you Person in a seat here right now. Here's Walker. Feigning a screen. Williams. Walker with the handle. Takes it. Puts it up. In! And a foul! Ho, ho, ho! That's how you get 30 points. <laughs> the hard way. It's just cleared out. It's my game. Pretty good defender in holiday but he stuck his hand in and Kim a Edward was trying to get himself a, a better Ready. angle here comes Trevor Booker no bear checks out no bear at 7-1 I guess they don't like his handle uh, he wasn't handling here he was just going to the rim I'm sure Booker got it are you kidding me?